thinking about making an offer on a new construction home? Well, buying a new construction home is way different than buying a resale, as you may be aware. Here, I covered 20 steps, boom, 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 to help you understand what all is involved and increase the likelihood that you win and enjoy your dream home. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey, Ravi with the Rams Group at EXP Realty here. And if this is the first time we're connecting, I welcome you to my channel, where I strive to provide meaningful, relevant, and educational content to help both home sellers and buyers and keep you in the real estate now. This video is dedicated to what it takes to own a new construction home. And I've included specific time markers in the description below for you to directly jump to the relevant topics as you see fit. That said, the pros of buying new are, well, it is new and it comes with a warranty, most likely a 1 to 10 warranty, the details of which I've included below in the resources section about what it all covers. As you know, buying a home with the warranty gives you the peace of mind post-purchase. Now, before we begin, I often get asked how much flexibility as buyers we have in adding removing structures or changing the orientation of home if you're buying new. This is a question that comes from buyers often. Not much is my response. Unless the home is site built. Well, what does site built mean? Site building is the traditional way of building a home. If you are thinking about building your home, which is a custom home starting right from design, site building your home is what it is. However, if your home is not going to be site built and will be part of a community also known as the planned unit development, then there will be little flexibility in you being able to change the design or any other aspect of the home. Okay. And the reason is when a home is newly constructed, everything follows a home construction pipeline, wherein the plans for the community and the homes that are part of the community have to be approved by the city well in advance, typically six months to about two years, even before the project begins. And during the construction, new construction home builders are a little less flexible in making changes. Not that they don't want to accommodate your requests, but any changes they make to the initially permitted plans will have to go through the permitting process all over again, making the timelines extend, causing the builders to take on additional expenses as most of the work that builders do is contracted out to contractors as well as subcontractors for whom the builders will have to shell out extra money from their bottom line. Hence, the builders are reluctant to change the home's elevation, walls coming down, design changes, and so most likely, if you're going to buy a new construction home, depending on where the home is construction wise, you may only have the flexibility to change the internal color schemes, such as cabinet colors, floor finishes, backsplash look and feel. However, there are also huge national builders will be a little reluctant to mix and match. For example, you may wonder whether you can have deep brown cabinets and change the floor color from being maple to hickory. That would be a no because things were ordered well in advance and builders will almost always prefer to keep the disruptions to a minimum and so that they can stick onto the timelines and budgets to the T, okay? With the flexibility of design changes as well as the home warranties that new construction homes come with addressed, let's talk about what all is involved in picking, offering, and closing on a new construction home is all about. Are you ready? Step number one, picking a new construction home and its pricing. When you're shopping for new homes and see a sign stating $999,000, be aware that it is just the starting price for the homes with no upgrade status. And many homes in the community will also have a lot premium associated based on the desirability of the lot. Say if it's a corner lot or if the lot faces the mountains or has a view, etc. Okay, that will make a difference in the cost. Plus the other options that will add to the cost are uh, say you pick high quality windows, different levels of cabinets that you can choose from, flooring, countertops, etc., and the finishes. Also, you want to be careful to not go overboard with your selections because you want to make sure that the banks will appraise the home because all the additional costs included in the home's price have to be taken into account for the home loan to be approved by the bank. So worst case, just wait on the fit and finish items, which you can take care of as after the home closes and you move it so that the transaction is minimally disrupted. Step number two, use a realtor. When you purchase a new construction home, it is absolutely important that you choose a realtor to represent you. Now, why would I say that? <laughs> Not because I'm a realtor myself. However, it is due to the nuances involved when you purchase a new construction home that 
you have someone who understands the ins and outs being in your corner. And this is absolutely critical, okay? And we've often seen that home buyers tour new community homes and the sales representative sitting in the site office telling buyers that they don't need an agent since having a realtor represent them is a cost to the builder. So they're trying to cut, cut on that, okay? And something to remember is that an agent sitting at the new house community is representing the builder and not you in the transaction. And the agent you hire will know the right questions to ask, helping you get the inside scoop, potentially positioning you to get builder credits in addition to helping you navigate the home ownership maze with ease. And this is important as well. Choose and pick an agent whom you are going to work with before you even start visiting the new home communities because builders have what is called a site registration policy wherein you will have to register your agent on your first visit to the community mostly. Either you can register your agent or your agent can register you as their client. This will not only help the agent represent you, but will bring them into the game so that you are protected. And for the best work that the agents do, the builder is going to compensate them. Your agent's compensation is an expense to the builder and not you, the buyer. So why not have quality representation from someone who's not only going to look out for you, but be able to advise you on the do's and don'ts. Step number three, the one page offer. Most builders will ac accept a one page offer from buyers. Once the offer is accepted by the builder, the builder's agent will normally draft the offer forms, builder agenda, maps, HOA information, etc., and send it to the buyers for electronic signatures. And your buyer's agent will be normally copied on all such emails. This is where buying a new construction home differs from buying a resale, where most of the offer forms are picked and drafted by the builder, whereas in case of resale, most of the forms that you'll use will come from your multiple listing service. Okay? And having a buyer's agent represent you will ensure that they review all the contracts, identify any terms that may not favor you, and alert you. One thing to note is that most builder contracts have language favoring the home builders and not you. So having someone in your corner will protect you and that's something to be aware of. Number four, price negotiations. Builders normally are reluctant to negotiate on the price of homes, unless the market is a buyer's market where homes are sitting and the builders are forced to make the sale and tally their books. Now your real estate agent, however, may be able to negotiate seller credits, upgrades, updates, and other goodies for you. Step number five, multiple offers. In a competitive market, there's potential that a launched home can attract multiple offers from various buyers. In this case, there's a bidding war between multiple buyers, right? And the best offer gets picked. While some builders offer an escalation class for buyers to have a starting price and escalate their offer to a maximum, other builders we're seeing are asking buyers to submit their highest and best. Now, this is something for you to be aware of from a price standpoint. Step number six, builders counter offers. Based on the market cycle, if the builder gets a low offer, they can exercise one of two options. Option number one is counter the buyer at the list price for the buyer to come up. Option number two is for the builder to reach out to their huge VIP buyer list and say, hey, this home is still at list price. Do you want to come and scoop it? And then chances are they'll have about hundreds and thousands of buyers in their VIP list and somebody will just jump and then scoop it up. And finally, option number three is for the builders to keep the home active on the market for fresh buyers to come in and eventually scoop it up. Now, given that we are in a seller's market in many places, we rarely see builders having to counter because most new construction homes are going way above ask anyway. Step number seven, contingencies. There are two main types of contingencies, financing and inspection. Most builders will say that buyers can do a home inspection. However, the builders will fix only code violations and not others. Now, the builder's take is that dings, dents, scuffs, including functional issues will either be taken care of during the blue tape walkthrough, which comes later in this video, or is covered by the home warranty. The other type of contingency is financing. This is where, as we warned you prior, know your budget and don't go in for too many upgrades to blow past your home's price with the upgrades that you pick and for the appraisal to come in short. Because at that point, backing out of the contract may cost you because your earnest money at that point is at stake. Okay. Step number eight, financing your purchase. You wanna get pre-approved before you start looking at new construction homes, since that'll give you a better idea of how much home you can afford and the price range for homes to look for. Now, 
This will also tell you what updates you can pick based on your budget. And most builders will work with their preferred lender and they'll incentivize you to use their, their lender by providing closing costs. And depending on how long the new construction home will take to complete and be ready for moving, you will have the option to shop around for the best rate and terms and pick your lender. That is, if the builder's preferred lender's terms is not agreeable to you. Step number nine, offer acceptance. Assuming that your offer is good for the builder and they sign the one page offer that you submitted, at that point, you are under contract with the builder. Yay, congratulations, you have secured your home. Step number 10, earnest money deposit. Upon going under contract, the earnest money is the deposit that you put in advance toward a home. Some builders charge a flat rate. However, it's most typical for builders to ask that you put in a percentage of the home's price. This is typically about one to 3% of the home's price. Now, the earnest money is part of your down payment and it's not something that you pay extra and helps you secure the home. This earnest money is normally due one to two days after going under contract with the builder. This earnest money that you deposit will be held by a neutral third party called the escrow and will be disbursed to the builder when the transaction closes. Step number 11, the right of rescission. Now most builders provide a two to seven day right of rescission after going under contract, which is when you, the buyer, can walk away from going ahead with the purchase of that particular home, should you get cold feet or if your situation changes. Now this is a time period when, should you decide to walk away, your earnest money will be refunded to you. This is also called the free walk period. Now beyond this period, your earnest money may be at stake should you choose to walk away. Now before making the initial offer, get clarity on this particular aspect as when you're purchasing a home, the worst case that you have to have is deal with last time and not even lose a nickel. And we at the Rams Group intently focus on this aspect to protect your money. Number 12. Design meetings. Depending on whether the home is site built or pre-designed, you will have the opportunity to participate in design meetings with the builder. Pick the finishes and agree both on the price and delivery terms. Now, by the way, most builders will ask you to pay for those upgrades that you picked separately, which are due at the time of the selection. And once you pick the upgrades and the builder installs them in your home, the builder will not give you the money you spent for those upgrades should you choose to walk away. Something for you to be aware of. Number 13, get introduced to the builder's team. You will get the contact information of the project supervisor. Now he or she will be your point of contact for tracking the construction's progress. Number 14, weekly updates in progress. The builder team, assuming your home is still under construction, now you as the buyer will hear from them every Friday normally about the project status, about where things are, and what is supposed to happen the following week and so that you're fully updated. And by this stage, the home's construction should be progressing well towards the project completion. Number 15, certificate of occupancy. This is something that the builder applies. A certificate of occupancy is a document that's issued by a local zoning or building department stating that a home or property is suitable for occupancy. But to be considered suitable, it needs to be compliant with the building code that applies in that area, which means it needs to adhere to the safety standards. New construction by nature has never been used or lived in before. As such, a certificate of occupancy is needed to ensure that the new home or building is habitable. Number 16, home inspection. About 14 to 21 days, which is like two to three weeks before the home closes, it's a good idea to have a home inspection. Remember that almost all builders will only fix issues that are code violations identified by the home inspector during the inspection. Now as a future owner, the home inspection will expose you to things that are of concern from an inspector's perspective. Your agent will be in touch with the builder relaying all the items that were found by the inspection and get closure on them. This will be a prelude to the blue tape walkthrough which comes next. Number 17, blue tape walkthrough. Five days prior to closing, you, the buyer, will walk through the home with the home build manager and literally paste blue tapes on dings, dents, scuffs and blemishes on the walls, nail pops, missing caulking, paint imperfections, etc. Now during this time, the items uncovered from your inspection report can also be brought up once again and closed on. During this meeting, the manager who does the walkthrough with you will prioritize all the items uncovered from both the blue tape walkthrough and the inspection, and you both will agree upon the timelines for all those fixes to get in. Number 18, the final walkthrough. Woohoo, we're almost at the end. So three days prior to closing the home, 
you will have a chance to do a final walkthrough of the home and inspect whatever that was agreed upon during the blue tape walkthrough and the inspection items that the builder was going to fix were indeed fixed and this is your chance to follow up and if everything checks out okay at this point your realtor will communicate to the builder that the home is ready to be closed yay number 19 closing and keys ha you're at the final stage on the closing day you will sign a bunch of papers with the escrow company and they'll tell you how much funds that you have to bring to the closing table and you sign all the closing paperwork and after that your closing is recorded with the county and you officially become the homeowner congratulations you did it yay excited you should be that takes us to item number 20 which actually lists the things that you have to take care of as soon as you move in this I called as post move in the things that you have to do okay after you move in we suggest that you document the items that are acting up including any fundamental cosmetic issues that you uncover what you're doing here is building a checklist for the one-year warranty term which will primarily be workmanship related and proactively around the 10 month mark post you moving in start notifying the builders team so that you are creating a written trail of the issues that you found that need to be fixed and some of the common issues are related to the homes settlings nail pops etc and the reason you want written communication is that the staff changes project managers change contractors change and the only place you can go back and refer is to the email threads that you exchange with the builder and get everything that is covered under the one year warrant term be addressed and fixed okay and your realtor can provide you with a list of things that you have to keep track of as well so that you continue to cherish your home ownership as you build your fond memories in your home in the days months and years to come sound good hey another ask if you found the information in this video useful, you hitting the subscribe button and smashing that bell icon and liking this video will not only help the algorithm, but will help others to derive value. And I totally appreciate you. And included below is my contact information. If you are in the market for a new construction, we at the Rams Group offer objective, meaningful advice on the things to look out for while purchasing a new construction home so that you as a buyer are protected and make the process as smooth as possible. If you found this information helpful, feel free to comment in the comment section below and let us know, which we totally appreciate. These are the several steps associated with buying, securing, and owning a new construction home. Now you know.